Welcome back to another episode of Kentucky Esports Weekly. I'm your host, Nathan Stevens. We have some good info heading your way today, including record-breaking viewership for Call of Duty Esports, the launching of a rather large commit from UK partner Gen G, and of course, industry news. Alex Cutadeen will be here later to tell us about some linguists playing games, which is cool, as well as remind us about Push to Talk, a Nicholas Hughes-led show you shouldn't miss. Till then, let's get it going with some quick hitters. The Call of Duty League Championship final drew a record viewership this past week that reset the all-time viewers for Call of Duty Esports. Over 330,000 viewers tuned in this week to watch the Dallas Empire and Atlanta Faze go head-to-head. -head. Dallas ultimately taking the cake and becoming the first championship team. Dallas collected $1.5 million in prize money, that is a lot of money, and a nice CDL trophy to boot, although I think the money was probably a little bit cooler of a prize. The Empire best the phase in a best of nine series with a 5-1 series victory. Um, Johanna Ferres capped off the event by saying, what an epic final, excuse me, what an epic finale to an amazing Call of Duty League championship weekend. Congratulations to the Dallas Empire as the league's first ever champions to the entire Envy Gaming organization and to the great city of Dallas. You all earned the glory with a dominating performance today. Thanks as well to all of our 12 CDL team franchises for making this inaugural season so successful, exciting, and memorable. Good stuff for the CDL, and we can all agree that we're glad it was not the Dallas Cowboys winning anything. Probably not Cowboys fans would agree with that. So moving along, um, the University of Kentucky's Gina Lee is reporting that esports giant Gen G has committed $1 million, a $1 million pledge to students across US universities and or colleges that are interested in jobs related to the video game field. That includes any student majoring in esports, journalism, content creation, or some sort of video game focus or study. It's really nice. Gen G CEO Chris Park gave this statement about the commitment. The gaming industry has only scratched the surface of developing talented young gamers who can lead the industry's next generation. This and future classes of the Gen G 10, or excuse me, Gen 10, will strengthen the diversity and representation that gaming needs to reach its full potential. This pledge is absolutely fantastic for any student interested in getting into video games one way or another. Having funding and encouragement to pursue their passions is amazing. Nice on Gen G for laying down the commitment. It certainly speaks volumes. On that good note, that is it for Quick Hitters. Let's shift over to industry news with Haley and Tyler. Hello, I'm Tyler Ralston. And I'm Haley Sellers. And this is your week's industry news. Among all the trailers that the Gamescom livestream event this week provided is Little Nightmares 2, a sequel to the Tarzier Studios horror game of the same title from 2017. This new entry takes players outside of the familiar horrors within the underwater labyrinth ship known as the Maw and into the outside world. While the environment is still presented through a childlike lens, with every space permeating with a sense of enormous scale and vast unknowns where twisted creatures lurk in the darkness, there is a new protagonist in the boy called Mono, who hides his face underneath a brown paper bag. Like before, players will have to use their wits and size to their advantage hiding in tall grass and solving puzzles to progress while evading different creatures and avoiding traps set by would-be pursuers. Within the gameplay footage provided, Mono is shown meeting Six, the protagonist from the original title, and despite their stressful first encounter, these two must work together to survive this world as Mono seeks to reach a signal tower in the distance. However, the devs have come out and said that despite the cooperation between these two characters, this game is entirely a solo venture like its predecessor. While this is disappointing for the fact uh, of those who want co-op, it does help to maintain the eerie and isolated feeling the game provides. Little Nightmares 2 is set to release February 21st, 2021 on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X, as well as the Nintendo Switch. Team Kill Media revealed a trailer for their latest horror game, Quantum Error. The reveal was another part of the Gamescom livestream event, and the trailer gives a little bit more information on the game itself and release details. After receiving a distress call, players will join a team of firefighters sent to investigate. The further into the story players go, the cosmic horror game will grow more intense, action-packed, and suspenseful. 
The trailer notes that the game footage is a work in progress and does not reveal a release date for the game, though the official website says that Quantum Era will be a PlayStation exclusive for the PS4 and PS5. Now that the new trilogy of Star Wars movies has completed its story, it is time for a new LEGO Star Wars game to retell the entire saga with its characteristic comedic twists. While each entry in the past would cover many of the existing movies, or even in cases the Clone Wars and other expanded universe content, LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga appears to be absolutely pushing the limits of expectations. Full voice acting is featured through each of the movies while still maintaining some of the prop comedy that made the originals funny, and the gameplay is being overhauled. Jedi, Sith, and other lightsaber-wielding characters will have proper attack combos and a variety of force powers while blaster characters may have an almost third-person shooter over-the-shoulder perspective for combat. From the trailer, the boss battles look to be much more engaging and interesting, and the flight sections such as the trench run from A New Hope will be more action-packed and detailed. Hub areas and other environments are said to be much larger in scale, and there will be options to travel to multiple worlds. So far, 500 characters are said to be within the game, and most of them will be playable. One such addition is Yaddle, a female background character from Episode 2, who is from Yoda's species, being shown in a map that looks strikingly similar to the EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 Kashyyyk map. From what has been shown, this game certainly gives the impression that it is a love letter to the series and wishes to give the most genuine LEGO Star Wars experience possible. Goofs, action, drama, and adventure all to the fullest extent within modern games. While the game has been delayed until the spring of 2021, it will release on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Ghost Runner received a 30-second trailer from Gamescom. The mini-trailer highlights the game's fast action and combat. Fights are centered around precision, accuracy, and skill, and players can pull off parkour moves. Players will need these skills to climb the Dharma Tower, which may be the last hope for humanity. Ghost Runner is being billed as a cyberpunk game that takes place in a high-tech world suffering the effects of an apocalypse-like event. Players can register online to take part in the game's beta stage later this month. The beta will only be available on Steam and requires players to be at least 18 years old. The full game is expected to launch on PS4, Xbox One, and PC sometime later in the year. More information about Ghost Runner is expected to be revealed on September 15th. Last week, we talked about the teaser trailer release for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and how more information should arrive on the 26th. Well, an extended trailer was released featuring a full cutscene from the game where the main cast is briefed on their target, the Soviet spy known only as Perseus. Featured are the returning characters of CIA agent Hudson, alongside soldiers Alex Mason and Frank Woods, as well as the then-president Ronald Reagan, entrusting these familiar faces with the task of finding and eliminating Perseus. So far, the campaign has been described as the Hollywood action style of the reboot for Modern Warfare. In regards to multiplayer content, the game will feature the return of expected game modes, as well as cross-play compatibility, not just across platform, but across generations. So Xbox One and Series X players can match together, or PlayStation 5 and PC, and so on. A seasonal battle pass will be included, as expected for modern shooters, However, it is also stated that progress between the newest Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War will be shared, including operators, weapon skins, and all of it. In addition to all of this, Activision also confirmed that the fan-favorite Zombies game mode will be returning to the series, though details on this specific rendition of Zombies will have to come at a later date. A full reveal for the game's multiplayer features are set to de debut September 9th. November 13th is the release for the current gen version of Black Ops Cold War, with a holiday release for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, with either of these standard versions costing $59.99, or you can pay $10 more for their cross-generation bundle that gives you access to all the generations of the game. And finally, we have a look at Mega September, a three-week-long Pokemon Go event. Mega September, which centers on Mega Evolutions, will challenge players to reach certain goals throughout the month of September. If they can, Niantic will incorporate additional Mega Evolved Pokemon to the game. The first week of the event started on September 1st with the theme of Mega Raids. This is a new level of raid battles, and players are encouraged to raid with friends. 
The week will also see limited time field research tasks introduced. Week two is Mega Evolved Battles. Beginning on the 8th, players can use Mega Evolved Pokemon for a number of gym battles and PvP battles. The final week will kick off on September 22nd and will be called Mega Evolved Buddies. Mega Evolved Pokemon will be able to stay in their Mega Evolved form for 12 hours, three, three times longer than their usual amount. Throughout the Mega September event, players will also have the chance to run into increased spawns of different types of Pokemon. Be sure to follow the Mega event for all the latest announcements and event exclusives. And that's all for the industry news this week. Now back to Nathan. Well, we have reached the end of the show, and we've got Alex Cunadine joining us. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so what's happening on campus? What do we what do we got to look forward to right now with uh, eSports and games? Yeah, so the first thing, the big news, and this made like national news. This was picked up on eSports Insider and, um, and MSN and... Uh, huge news this week. Uh, UK and JMI partner Gen G, who we're doing this whole esports thing with, has announced their Gen 10 scholarship. Um, that's going to be, uh, it's going to guarantee at least one UK student a $10,000 scholarship. And that scholarship is going to continue over the course of 10 years. So just for a UK student, um, not a single UK student, it's going to be multiple ones, but that's going to be $100,000 worth of scholarships. And in total, they're going to award a million dollars worth of scholarships over 10 years um, to, to students at various universities. An amazing program. And uh, the, we want to let our students know about that. So the, that should open up September 15th. Um, head over to gen.g.gg. Um, their website, they will have more information posted there. So that is some exciting stuff. Um, huge scholarship for uh, the eSports program. That's very cool. Like anytime you can you can support a student getting into the gaming industry, which is like I know 10 years ago, it was probably just people would laugh that you'd want to go into the video game industry if you weren't part of, I don't know, programming or you know something like that. Um, but it's neat to see that there is an outside entity who's really just stoking that fire for a student and just supporting them. That's pretty cool. Right. And there's lots of different uh, areas. So, you know, it could be someone who's interested in programming, but it could be someone who's interested in media production or, um, you know, even the psychological aspect, someone who's doing research in that area. So there are... Uh, don't feel like just because you're not a programmer that you might not qualify. Check out check out the the website um, and and apply. And if you're interested in getting involved with UK esports, um, you know, reach out to us and um, you know make that part of your application, um, your interests and and what you want to do with esports at UK. And uh, and there's definitely going to be more opportunities uh, in the future, and there's going to be more scholarships. And uh, this this will be uh, open up to any undergraduates. And uh, so, yeah, so, so look forward to that and, and potentially get involved with esports and, and get a scholarship to go along with it. That's two great things. That is awesome. That is very awesome. And so, what uh, else you got for us? Yeah, so I uh, want to remind some people of uh, a, a new event we've got going on on our Twitch channel, as well as uh, some existing programming. Every week, our, our crew from Push to Talk uh, you know, shares their opinions about the gaming world, video, video game releases, uh, you know, drama that's going on in the industry. They stream at 6 p.m., uh, 6 to uh, 7 ish p.m. every Thursday. And uh, that's on our Twitch channel, so look out for that. And we just launched a new weekly event. It's Linguists Playing Games. <laughs> uh, Andrew Bird has kicked that off. Now, Andrew Bird from uh, Far Cry Primal fame, he was the uh, helped to develop the language in that game. Um, he's done some streams about that with us, but um, he's so excited about this that he's like, hey, let's get some linguists on and, and stream each week. They are, they just streamed this Monday, but they are going to continue that every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., at least through this semester and maybe going uh, on into the next one. So uh, it was interesting commentary. They had a lot of fun on Monday this week. So look forward to that on our Twitch channel, Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m. Andrew Bird's a pretty cool guy. So that is that is neat. That's good news. So, Well, excellent. Well, I think that's all we got for this uh, this episode. We hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, Please stay safe on campus or wherever you are. Wear masks, and um, we hope you have a good rest of your week. See ya.